Welcome to the Lazy Geeks Network. Captain, we are being hailed. This is Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the USS Enterprise. Enterprise. But what could it be? Unknown, sir. Perhaps it is scanning. 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 Welcome, everyone, to the Away Team podcast, our Star Trek The Next Generation dedicated podcast that recaps each Star Trek episode with a bit of a twist. Mm. Basically, we'll ruin it for you for life. Um, <laughs> cause I, it was funny because I was uh, the other day my brother was um, had Star Trek on. And of course, he wasn't watching it. He just had the TV on. And I was uh, in my other room, in my room, and all of a sudden I heard something. And then I was like, is that? Is that Kaczynski's voice? And I like, peeked my head in the living room. Sure enough, where where no one's gone before was on there. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise known as the Wesley Traveler love story. So, uh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I love how people say, like, that, that episode really kind of ruined it for me. <laughs> Your guys' this episode. Did it ruin it for you, or did it give I, you perspective? I thought it enhanced it really because it kind of gave a little did, yeah. a little subtext in there to you know yeah, that's everything right. that's going on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Stephen. All you got to do is get to the conver- like them two having a conversation. Mute the show and then put on some soft music, <laughs> and it fit. Oh yeah, <laughs> it definitely does. Uh, well, I'm Stephen Vargas. I'm Adam Riley. All right, so we are back with this episode, Samaritan Snare, and uh, we're almost through. I mean, this is episode uh, 17, so aired in May, so it looks like we only have like a handful of episodes left mm-hmm. to uh, after this one. Uh, let me get down here, see the bottom of memory alpha. It's 23 episodes there? Yeah, I think so, because we have, uh, let me go back one. And then we're at, uh, yeah, episode 17. So there's, oh, 22 episodes left. So we have one, two, three, four, five episodes after this left of this of season two. And then we can finally get to the quality stuff in season three, which is 26 episodes. Right. Yeah. yeah this That's when they really started realizing that this show was groundbreaking as fuck. <laughs> Yeah, the writers in the writers room. This show is groundbreaking as fuck. That's right. <laughs> yeah, because next season we get the the instance of command. You know where we got the the lower level. Um, was it the writers' strike over in the third season? Well, that's why the second season got cut short to twenty two because the writers' yeah. strike had started. Um, and then we get like shows like, oh, who watches the Watchers? That's a good one. Um, the uh, booby trap. We've got the defector. Deja Q when Q's kicked mm. out of the continuum. That one's funny. Oh, Yesterday's Enterprise. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Sins of the Father. There we go. That's when yeah. a good one happens there. Sarah. There's tons tons of good fucking episodes in the third. This is when shit starts popping off. Yeah. And then this fucking, the cherry, the cherry on the top of the Sunday <laughs> is the season finale. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and then you have fucking um, the grueling that no one knows anymore, the feeling of seeing your childhood hero <laughs> become the worst enemy he could ever be. And then to be continued. And you had to wait like half a fucking year. <laughs> it was before really three you months, but yeah, you still it was it felt- you had to wait ten years. <laughs> <laughs> I just found out. No. It was like waiting for a Sherlock season to come back, you know? It was like right. <laughs> oh man. All right, so before we get into this episode, we might as well find out what happened on last time, or next time on Star Trek, The Next Generation. (laughs) Next time on Star Trek, The Next Generation, Captain Picard's life is on the line as he faces a critical operation. This man is dying. And Geordi is held hostage by alien kidnappers. Drop your shields! This is the Enterprise. Return our personnel or face immediate reprisal. Two lives hang in the balance. The captain needs our help. 
Phaser's ready, sir. My friends, my people, they're trying to kill us. Fire on Star Trek, the next generation. All right, so let's keep in mind that the whole A line that they put in there, Captain Picard's life was in danger, is like, you know, one-fifth of the actual episode. <laughs> yeah, like, his life was in danger at the end. Yeah, in the last act, his life was in Otherwise, it was him and, jo- uh, him and uh, Wesley just kind of talking. Eating sandwiches and shit. I actually really liked the little conversations they had on the ship. And, I, I dug you it, know, too, it was... because it was um, also, this is where we find out about the Nausicaan. Yeah. Yeah, which comes back later in a later season with Tapestry. I love that episode. Ooh, Tapestry's a dope episode, and dude. Q, and then you find out what Picard, basically Picard's It's a Wonderful Life. I love right. the, the episode I, I love is where Q's like, welcome to the afterlife, Captain Picard, uh, Jean-Luc. You're dead. <laughs> and then Picard's like, he goes, you're, he goes, this isn't heaven and you're not God. And then he's like, I refuse to believe the universe was created so poorly. <laughs> Because <laughs> right. Oh, he said. Um, he said. Uh, I refuse to believe you're in charge of the afterlife, or something like yeah. that. I was dying. <laughs> you're like going, yeah, I would believe that too. <laughs> oh man. All right. So I guess. Uh, yeah. So that that they kind of overstated it a little bit as to uh, Picard's life being in danger. Oh, they always do. Yeah, you know. I know. It's always like. Next time on Star Trek, the next generation, Captain Picard clings to life as he can't decide whether to get Earl Grey. (laughs) Uh, So apparently the Enterprise is en route to Epsilon 9 sector for an astronomical survey of the Epsilon Pulsite cluster, which Picard is like all set on sea. Like he's just even his even his log entry intro. He sounds excited. Yeah. Like he's just like, yeah, like he, he wants to like, go see this. I mean, he's, he's ready to beat off to it. Like, you know, it's like, yeah. show it on the main screen. Oh, skate, 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 you know? <laughs> <laughs> you have Troy, like, with her hand kind of there, like, uh, Captain, can you save that? Fuck you, I'm doing it here. I'm the <laughs> captain of this bitch. <laughs> I run this shit. <laughs> oh, come on, everything. Data, just stand right there. <laughs> uh so they're they're going there, and they're also going to drop off Wesley in a shuttlecraft because you know he's not worthy diverting the whole ship um, to uh, continue taking a test on whether he's going to uh, on, at uh, for the Starfleet exam to see if you know he can continue s- receive training on the Enterprise. But it's him. It's Captain. Oh yeah, he's basically testing out. Yeah. Of of a part of the. Um academy because yeah. he still has to go to the academy i think for the um like the actual training like the flying things and stuff right. like that but he's testing out of the book section of it yeah that's what it seems like to me anyway yeah and then it, it was also to see if he's you know i think it was at the same time of like seeing of whether he can continue serving on the enterprise in, in right. lieu of you know because Being that's, an acting that, ensign yeah you know like, like should we let this um 17 year old acting ensign um sit as the navigator yeah. um, on the on flagship a, on the flag of the fleet <laughs> anymore. You know, he's like, because the thing is, is that you think about it. If Wesley kind of didn't do very well on his exam, they'd be like, what the fuck are they doing on the enterprise? Like what the yeah. hell they got going on over there? Like, was it strippers and uh, strippers? This kid and- can't even add four plus four. You motherfuckers <laughs> got to find shit. He don't even know how the, how the, uh, the coordinates work on the fucking console. What the fuck does he do as the navigator? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, they say go this way. I go that way. That's where I go. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I go. <laughs> <laughs> they go, go there. Okay, I go there. You know, hopefully. They don't say if I'm right or wrong. I just press all these buttons yeah. and the ship starts moving around. <laughs> I make the ship go. <laughs> 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 so, um, so, uh, in the beginning, actually, it's a uh, but Captain Picard and and um, racist Doctor Pulaski have a. Con- I love how that's her official name on this podcast. <laughs> racist Doctor Pulaski, yeah, that's right. Um, have this argument about how he needs to have his artificial heart replaced, and um, he can go to Starbase Five One Five where Wesley's going to um, have the procedure. But Picard's like, no, I don't need to go. He's he's doing the basic my- guy thing, you know. I'm still breathing. I got up. I can fuck bitches. I That's can, right. I can do lines of coke. It ain't a problem. I got this. <laughs> uh, I got it. <laughs> but we find out eventually that um, you know, or and then Pulaski's like, "Well, I I can do the I can do it here," 
And Picard's like, well, you're a racist doctor. I really don't think that's appropriate that you should be operating on my heart. Exactly. But, uh, and then basically you find out that Picard's like doing it on the ship would, would show, uh, uh, would be, uh, what did he say? Uh, um, oh God, he used, um, inappropriate would be inappropriate and it was basically coming down to the fact that he has an ego and he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't want his crew to see like somehow believing that it because he has an artificial heart like the crew's going to somehow mutiny they're going to kill him and they're going to take over the ship and then <laughs> you know and then you know run havoc through the galaxy um which is exactly what would happen. Right. Exactly. Because he's on a fucking bird of prey. And <laughs> ridiculous shit. I know. It's like, you know what? Let's leave the saucer section. Captain Picard's asleep. Let's all get onto the battle bridge. And let's just, like, detach the saucer section and leave Picard here alone. And we're going to go <laughs> fucking take off and start war with the Klingon Empire. Just because. <laughs> he is without honor. It's like, oh, shit. It's like, damn. This shit got real real quick here. <laughs> um. So, uh, so Picard refuses and then, you know, uh, and so he leaves, but we find out with, with Wesley that he needs to, uh, take the, take this test. And there's this little dialogue between him and, and, and Riker and Data and I think Worf, basically the gist of what they were saying is schools for chumps. Right. You know, you, you, you know, you're going to be here. You're going to, you're actually learning more than you would in school. School, schools, schools for pussies, you know. <laughs> pussies go to school. Get some, get some on on field training. Right. Who need any, any fucking books and shit? That's for bitches. You ain't gonna learn the Riker lean. That's right. In fucking school. Listen, let me ask you: How much pussy are you gonna get sitting in that classroom? <laughs> That's the question you need to ask yourself. And think about it: If you go to school, Dave's gonna fuck all your girls. So, That's right. Because you know, and Tate is in the back. Like I will too. <laughs> and best actually, believe. actually, he's already fucking one of them right there. Right <laughs> in the back. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right over the fucking console, just Swing, mm. swinging his arm around like a lasso and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then he looks over at Wes and gives him that slow wink. Just, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and then Wesley's like, I don't know whether I should be annoyed or applaud him for that time like uh, or aroused as we know <laughs> right exactly you know and then suddenly the, the image changes to the traveler and then he's just like then he just feels sad it's been a long <laughs> <laughs> so um so apparently they're gonna drop wesley off in a shuttlecraft to go to starbase 515 and then eventually uh reich uh picard comes out and he's just like uh you know um. All right, I'm gonna be joining Wesley on this ship, on the shuttlecraft, and uh, Riker's like, um, I thought we were gonna go check out this pulsar. You were really excited about it. Yeah, well, I'm going. And then he leaves, and Data kind of gives when when he goes off into his ready room, he kind of looks back at Riker like, the fuck is this dude's deal? You know, like, yeah. why why is he bitching out so so fast? And then so Riker goes into his quarters and just tries to and pushes you know, pushes uh, Picard into trying to tell him, you know, why he goes captain's prerogative. And then he's like, I got a rights to know, like he ain't letting this go. So, um, so basically Picard punches Riker in the nuts and then moves on. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, of course. Uh, no, it's exactly what happened. <laughs> Cause that was captain's prerogative right there. <laughs> next time on Star Trek, the next generation, a cock punch. <laughs> 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 and given that how tall Riker is, I mean that's that's you know fist level for Picard. You know? Yeah, because <laughs> he's like eighty feet tall, you know. <laughs> so um, we cut to uh, Wesley's like uh, we cut to Wesley's talking to uh, Jordy and Ensign Gomez. <laughs> and uh, when I saw her, I was like, oh, she is too hot. What the hell is Wesley talking about? Because I, I, anytime she's right. in a scene, it's like I don't listen to anybody. <laughs> Steve, Steve's like, "Ooh, Ensign Gomez is so high." He's he's messaging me, and he goes, "What was Wesley talking about?" I said, "Bitch, what were you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> so he's this like, was her her last episode as well. Yeah, and she was only I don't know why. Like, why? What the hell was she even in it? It's, yeah, it was one of those kind of things. So, 
Picard comes down and and Wesley's like, oh shit, I gotta, you know. He's not looking, let's just say he's not looking forward to uh, spending some quality time with Captain Picard on the shuttlecraft. And uh, so they're waiting, he, they're standing there in the hallway and then all of a sudden the shuttle, uh, the turbo lift door opens up and Picard comes rolling out. And then Jordy's like, getting ready for a little trip. And then, <laughs> that, <laughs> and then that look that Picard gave him. He gave him the mind your own fucking business look. <laughs> that was that, that was like, if it, 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 you interpret But don't that, catch these hands, look. <laughs> it, it, to me, it was more like, I would kill you where you stand if I was Worf right now. <laughs> if you were any other man, I would kill you where you stand. By the way, it was uh, chronometric particles emanating from the sphere that somehow sh- sh- protected them from the changes in the timeline. Right, right, right. just in case you forgot. Just in case you forgot that whole thing. <laughs> when Adam was here last week, we watched. They got <laughs> caught in a temporal wake. Right. <laughs> because you know yeah we watched first contact for no reason other than its first contact <laughs> right. and i was about to watch insurrection last night until i was uh um no, reminded that i needed to watch this episode <laughs> <laughs> my notes would have been off yeah because he really wanted to see that joystick scene i did and the gamer headphones and the <laughs> well, my wife even asked me she goes why are you watching insurrection isn't that the one you say it's like the worst one and i go yeah but Bad Star Trek's better than no Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> and there's still scenes in it that are cool. It has that fucking data scene where he goes up to Worf and goes, have you noticed that your breasts are firming up? <laughs> 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 so funny. So uh, so they get in the shuttlecraft, and it's the shuttlecraft Einstein. Yeah, we both noticed that too, because I put that in there, and then I noticed it was in your notes. <laughs> yeah, I liked it. I was like, oh, the shuttlecraft Einstein. Um it's no shuttlecraft. It's not the arrow ship that you no, no. gave me earlier, but no, no. You know. the shuttlecraft. Work. The shuttlecraft's for um, it's like an RV. Yeah, I kind of thought that I was like they're so bulky. Yeah, you know? and then you see na- and like then- a fucking minivan. <laughs> like you they- expect it when it when it lifts up, you hear beep beep beep, <laughs> and they don't even have that much going on. And this is also something that they're very luxurious. Like there's like benches and tables and like an arcade in the back and i, I think there was like <laughs> i don't know Sonic about shower, all that you know i don't know about all that <laughs> it was, it was nothing it was just <laughs> it was a fucking bench a, a fucking desk with yeah. a chair and that was it and the two <laughs> pilot chairs <laughs> the portal potty in the back which we didn't really see oh well, yeah you know, nobody goes nobody takes a leak or goes to the bathroom in star trek of course of course also um, like in 24 <laughs> in the show 24 jack bauer never eats and never goes to the bathroom he doesn't need to <laughs> he's busy <laughs> he's jack bauer <laughs> that's right <laughs> um no but i and i noticed that when i was watching this episode that it got me looking like what would be a good small cra- i got super nerdy today and i was just looking and i was looking through shit that wasn't even in the show like stuff that was in books <laughs> right. and i found this arrow class it was like a successor to the runabout and it was fucking dope. And I was like, here you go, Steve. We if we ever if we ever find ourselves in an alternate timeline. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> this is what we're taking. Oh man. So then the Enterprise receives a mayday from the Dr- uh Drongar sector. And um so of course they have to rush off. So the Enterprise rushes off and it, it, the, stre- the distress call. I was going to call it. I thought they said the Starship Mordor. And I was like, what? Then I realized it was, it was Mondor. It's a trap, motherfucker. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> the orcs, they're going to over- over- overpower the Enterprise. Uh, <laughs> which was man. By the way, the, shut- the shuttlecraft they took was a Type 6 shuttlecraft. Just want to let you know. The RV of shuttlecraft. The RV. <laughs> Of shuttlecraft, <laughs> they were six meters in length, bro. <laughs> and uh, the the ship Mondor was manned by the Packlids. So, um, it was funny because like uh, they they come up to the ship and they get uh, they get <laughs> they're told that their ship is broken and they need help. And it was funny because he's like, "We are far from home," and then Picard or uh, Riker gives that eloquent. Aren't we all <laughs> right? <laughs> like, there's a lot of that in this episode. First of all, let me let me full disclosure. I love the Packleds. The <laughs> the Packleds are such a devious fucking species, 
and and they're they're they remind me they remind me of 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 hot chicks that pretend to be dumb so they can get free shit oh right like that's basically what they do <laughs> but these these are neither hot nor chicks so you know, right just, they're yeah. all pretty ugly and <laughs> they still get free shit yeah <laughs> We look for things that make them, uh, we look for things that make them go. Right. Um, and so, like, you know, they, Data goes and scans the ship and can't find out, you know, anything that's broken. So, Jordy strolls up onto the bridge. Like, he's got all the time in the fucking world. And he comes strolling up and he's like, and then he throws some serious shade over there. Let me guess, that rubber band broke? Like, mm. damn, I was like, going. Damn, Jordy, I haven't seen this shade since early episodes of season one. Jordy bringing them zinkers back, dude. <laughs> and, and then when Jordy randomly strolls onto the bridge, yeah, he got that little swagger about him, yeah, dude. He, he was got, like, hey, what up, bitches? Like, he's like, oh, you didn't see what uh, Insane Gomez gave me in the turbo lift. So cool. he's, he's Engineering skipping. in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> he's giving people high fives and For shit. For no reason. <laughs> He goes around the horseshoe with the low fives, you know. Everybody's like, like he just got called out on the NBA. But it's one of those though. I already could see it in my head. So he he walks up, goes around the wharf station, and he's he's big smiles waving at people. But every time he does the low hand five, he gets serious on the face. You know, you know how you do it yeah, right. with the face. You made him a Hey, what's going on, player? Well, how you doing? Right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm doing well how you doing that, that's right really the, yeah and it's that direct eye contact well, what's up pimp like you know stay <laughs> up <laughs> don't let them keep you down Just You're right <laughs> <laughs> so they decide you know so they're looking at like the ship and they can't figure out what's going on so they're like going oh well you know jordy will go over there and uh, and check him out and this is funny because this is where wharf brings up a really good point do we need to do we need to send over our chief engineer? Can't we just send them the info? Right. Uh, Worf's the only one that makes it Worf and surprisingly Diana later yeah, on right, are the right. only ones that make fucking sense. <laughs> also, there's a big um there's a big canon problem in this show. But technically it wasn't a problem when the show aired. <laughs> but but there's it, it's the start of a big canon problem and I'll get into it a little later. <laughs> so uh, you know, it's funny because like data data's like they got nothing like you know it's all good <laughs> you know and then Warp ain't about that life he's like um no we got a problem because <laughs> <laughs> this shit's about to go off and there's nothing we can do about it uh but everybody's like Warp, you need to chill because these guys talk like they're five-year-olds and so he's like We've, we've got no problem. So they go to send. Uh, but then I don't get the logic of that either. Like just because someone's dumb doesn't mean they can't hurt you. Right. You know, it's like those are even that's the worst type. You know. Right. So and it cuts back to this the little moment where there's an <laughs> I, I call this the awkward elevator ride for six hours <laughs> <laughs> with Picard and a. Uh, and Wesley and Wesley's like piling in his shut on Picard's just sitting there like on fucking holiday reading a book. Reading a book, not a pad, a book. Right. Uh, and uh, this is where he first mentions his fake heart and that the artificial heart that he has is, is faulty. And uh, it just kind of touches on that for a little bit. Then it cuts back to the uh, to the pack leads where uh, Jordy beamed over. And um, he's, you know, like, hey, I need to kind of look around and shit. So can you... Show me what where I can look so I can find out you know what the problem is, and this and uh, they I put in here that they're acting like weird pedophiles, like the way when he beamed over and they all kind of reached over and started like touching him, I was like eh, that's just getting a little weird. <laughs> I would instantly beam off. I'd be like, I'm, I'm not down with this. Yeah, he'd be like going, okay, okay. Uh, nobody said about five of you, so I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Start touching the hey, that's gonna cost extra. <laughs> Uh, this ain't for free <laughs> that's right yeah uh, so uh and just with the it was funny because like the way they're talking you know i put in here i go it's testing my patience not just shorties <laughs> like, <laughs> and then troy strolls up onto the bridge and like the fuck is is jordy 
Like she immediately comes on and goes. But she look, you know what she looked like? She looked like that angry mom right. that came in to ask the other kids where the one kid was. Like, yeah, where, where the fuck the, is that where asshole the at? Troublemaker is because that's what that usually right. happens. It's you go. I know this the, bitch doing something. <laughs> like, where is this motherfucker? Because she comes in there and she's like, um, "Where's, where's Jordy?" And I'm like, he's over on the other ship. She's like, um, "He's in danger." Like, <laughs> and you kind of expected Worf to kind of fold his hands across his chest and to be like, "Mm-hmm." <laughs> but she kind of no, he did kind of have that look when they panned over to him. He's like bitches, like I told you. But then I'm sitting there like these motherfuckers are stupid. Deanna Troy <laughs> is the one who comes on the bridge and looks at them like, are you fucking dumb? Like why would you do that? Picard's been off the ship for what an hour and they already <laughs> fucking up. <laughs> like, God damn. Captain Picard hasn't been gone for an hour and you guys are already so ready the to dad. Build the ship. It's like I'm surprised the ship hasn't self destructed by now. <laughs> Dad leaves for a little bit, and then mom comes in and notices that everybody's fucking up. They're painting the walls and shit like that. <laughs> Riker's writing his name with his dick on the on the you, seats. <laughs> you wait till your father comes home. I swear to God. Oh man. So uh, <laughs> I know, and it's funny because like this time and uh, in the was it the previous episode? Yeah, the previous. Yeah, was it the previous episode with the Q with the Borg? That was Which like, one? Last episode. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, last episode was the Q one. Yeah, so it's like the last two episodes. She actually has something to say where she's like, "Um, there's a problem," and no one listens to her. Yeah, like it's, they're all like, "You're whatever," you're, and then they go, they they fucking hail Jordy, and like, "Hey." Everything good? Yeah. <laughs> and Jody's like, yeah, it should yeah. be done in a little bit. <laughs> like, and yeah. then the only thing Riker gets mad about. So, okay. <laughs> Jordy, Jordy's over there and he's fixing their navigation systems. Right. By the way, their navigation systems on some motherboards. I thought this motherfucker was making a game in PC. So, so he, he, you want a Nvidia card or <laughs> right? Or you going with that new that new AMD? Because it's kind of hot. I'm just saying. Um, so he fixes that, but then they have a main um, power failure. Right. So he tells them, "Oh, you know what? Riker's going to take a little bit more time than I thought." You know, now he's upset. Yeah. Now Riker's like. This motherfucker. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be taken all damn day sitting here waiting to help these bitches. I'm like, first of all, <laughs> you have two people. One is your chief of security saying this security issue. <laughs> then you have the person who can read minds <laughs> saying, hey, these motherfuckers ain't cool. <laughs> And Rick is just and like, no, pissed. it's good. Yeah, Rick is like, no, it's good. And then as soon as Jordy's going to hold up his time to get to his next fuck session <laughs> Riker gets upset. You see, you see, it would, yeah, you see like Riker keep looking down at his watch and shit and go like, hey, can you uh, flag a uh, Lieutenant Galloway? Tell her I'm going to be about maybe 20 minutes Hey, can late. you flag Ensign Gomez? Tell her I'm going to be a little late. <laughs> fuck all that. And then Jordy's all like, Ensign Gomez, that's my bitch. Oh, shit. And then they're all mad. And, you know, that's why they start fighting on each other. <laughs> like, like in last week, you're still pissed because I fucked that bitch, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you know he is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... So yeah, so now we're uh, now we're back on the uh, now we're back on the shuttlecraft, and that was when I sat there and I looked and I go, wait, was what's they gonna pilot the shuttle alone? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, I guess he could. I mean, he I mean, could, one person but... can pilot those shuttles, and they weren't that far away from the station. Six hours. A lot of shit can happen in ten minutes on Star Trek. This is Star especially, Trek. Especially, especially on a shuttlecraft. Yeah. That doesn't even have shield. Those fucking things. You know what the defenses are on on a on a class six shuttlecraft? Oh, deflector shields. Yeah. Deflector <laughs> shields. And and they're not even stock installed with phasers. They stock have no torpedoes. They don't got serious AM FM radio. No heated seats. And well, shit. no, you can. I mean, you can for special engagements. You can. They have ports to install phasers, but or lasers. But they don't have they don't have them on there. So he's basically driving a Winnebago. <laughs> To a fucking, I mean, they're in Fed Federation space, but so's the fucking Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> so what the remember, fuck is going on? I remember with Discovery last week, I mean, they were they were in Federation space too, right? Heading back to the Discovery, and yeah. the fucking Klingons took took that, took uh, uh, what's his name? So it's like, um, yeah, shit can happen in there. You're gonna send this kid by himself. How are you gonna tell Beverly? Uh, so Beverly, we like 
drop the kid off and, and the, you didn't even give him a fast one you gave him the See, fucking what winnebago ha- what had happened was <laughs> i'm gonna do a little research and see if they had a better shuttlecraft i mean they had the captain's yacht which they never used <laughs> right but which was even I'm in gonna, the original enterprise but nobody ever used the captain's yacht doesn't make any sense you know what else had a a, a captain's yacht mm. the uh decora marauder the ferengi ship oh, of course it did it has a um, it has a drop ship on the bottom, because remember Roddenberry wanted them to be the main aggressor. Right. So it was built in the ship, but they never used it because they're they were bitches, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, basically, it's you know Wesley brings up the obvious. You know, uh, so why are you on the? Why are you? Why are you? Why are you? Why, why are you going? <laughs> why, like, why, why, why are you here? Yeah, why are you on here with me? So, Picard uh, confides and tells him that it, you know the ship wasn't his, the trip wasn't his idea, and he has to have a cardiac replacement. And uh, Picard's being kind of a dick too. Yeah, he's really just being standoffish with him and just kind of being rude, and you know, um, so he was just like, you know, well, why didn't you have like you know, racist doctor replace it. And he's just like, (laughs) and he fucking gets up and like walks into the back, like, you know, that back section with it. I was like, damn, what a dick. Oh, excuse me. Let me correct real quick. So the enterprise D had many different shuttlecrafts. The Einstein is a type seven, which still doesn't have fucking shields (laughs) or weapons on it. And then hold on. They have, Pretty much every other kind of shuttle. <laughs> so let's go to the highest number and see. Oh, that's. Oh, this is the one that um, uh, Jordy took when he was sipping on that drink. <laughs> Remember that one episode? Um, none of these shuttle pods got weapons on. It make no fucking sense. Mm. It just. I mean, you can put them on there. Oh yeah, wait, the, the, that's stock level doesn't have them. You have to. You have to. Uh, uh, you have to. Those are special order. That you have to get in there, you know, with like the heated seats and the uh, and the, uh, <laughs> the the extra dilithium to make them warp capable, you know, stuff like that. Damn, the Enterprise D had a lot of shuttlecraft. Yeah, well, just, just saying, it's got a thousand people on it, mostly your families. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's good for morale, bro. Right. <laughs> Look, so, they could have took the Calypso, which is the captain's yacht, motherfucker. <laughs> boo, boo, boo. Anyways, uh, so Jordy's, you know, thinks he fixed the issue, and they're like, uh, "Yeah, I think I'm done here." And Tro- they're like looking at Troy, like, "See, worried for nothing." Basic bitch is pretty much what they were kind of going with. <laughs> and then they're like, you know, you know, we find things to make them go. Basically, they found Jordy that helps make them go. And then suddenly, like, they have this, like, entire, like, um, power failure on the ship. And I was like, motherfucker, that fucking Windows upgrade. That's what happened. Yep. You know? And they had that fucking Windows upgrade. And then suddenly, you know, shit was incompatible. They had the wrong driver somewhere and just crashed the whole thing. So <clears throat> then it goes back. So then, you know, Jordy's like, yeah, I got this. This might take a little bit longer. And then... uh so what's funny is is that at this particular point um they're like you know this is ridiculous let's get them out of there then finally the shields go up and they're like trying to get uh trying to beam Jordy back but before this there's another little moment with Picard and Wesley where uh Wesley is feeling really insecure with Picard and uh Picard is like you know what oh god he said something about him it was like oh he says i know you don't feel comfortable oh, around yeah. me because you don't have children right and then picard is acts like oh is it obvious like pff, motherfucker it's like one of the biggest secret it's like one of the worst kept secrets in starfleet but then instead of calming the child's nerves picard moves to the seat to back yeah bro. <laughs> he's just like he's like wow He's like, bitch, I got time for this, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because, like, Wesley starts hitting him, like, hits him with that father line. You know, like, if you thought about being a father, I was like, ooh, smooth, Wesley, make the captain yeah. feel like him. And he's hitting Picard on that deep level shit, like, just, like, like hitting him on those, like, 
you know, well, have you thought about, you know, like being a father or being that, you know, he's like hitting him on those like levels, like hitting Picard under the, like he's, his, the, um, torpedoes like penet um, knocked out his shield. So it's like hitting him right in the core. Right. And I was like going, Ooh, smooth, Wesley, smooth. <laughs> so then we're back on the enterprise and then, you know, Riker's had enough cause he's already had to push off two dates, you know? <laughs> um, to deal with this whole pack lid thing. So he tries to bring Jordy back. He can't beam him back because the, the shields got went up. And um, at the same time, the pack lids are like, you know, ha for some reason have Jordy's phaser. Did they? I think they took it from him or something like that. Like they took it from him or they had it or they... No, they took it off him. Yeah, and then they... I think they pushed him and he dropped it or something. Yeah, and they stunned him, which fucking sent him back into that console. It's also those those little phasers. Yeah. It looks like a fucking laser pen. Yeah, it wasn't even... Yeah, it's not the... Um, it's not the I'm going to battle type of phaser. Right. It's or like the... the or the, 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 the... um What do they used to call them? The... um The... Oh, God. Those little handheld vacuums. <laughs> the black and decker vacuum the uh dust buster the dust buster uh um phasers that they used to have remember the ones yeah them? um he hits him with the smaller one which sends jordy flying into the console <laughs> and uh they find out that the packlets have um shielding that's very close that's reminiscent of uh romulan shields and has and blocked the enterprise like on twitter they blocked the enterprise <laughs> from communications and all that stuff. yeah <laughs> i was like damn <laughs> they're like <laughs> they when you break the terms and service bro it ain't no joke <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. uh so um you know they're so they come back and like you know there's a there's a call to action like they got to do something and i was like you know what a good i told you so would probably work right right around there like kind of hit oh it's a uh, real quick the phaser that Jordy had was a type one phaser. Jesus. I'm a hey man. I'm bringing the fucking legitimacy to the podcast. <laughs> the bigger one is the type two phaser. Just saying. Yeah. This one was used for diplomatic missions as well as undercover work. Yeah, because it was small. Felt in the palm of your hand. That's right. You can shoot that shit off in your pocket. Is this my phone? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> my dick. <laughs> so... In this, ha like, half of this scene is, you know, Picard kind of realizing, like, all right, you know what? I kind of fucked up with Wesley. He's yeah. Like, you know, he goes with a peace offering and asks him if he wants a sandwich and coffee. And, you know, <laughs> Wesley's like, nah, nah, bro. Nah, I'm good, I'm bitch. Good, bro. <laughs> I, you know, that, that, like, that, like, I'm good, bro. You know, that kind of, that, that, that kind right. of, uh, hit so he's like come on you must be hungry and uh so he you know he eats so he's like all right so he goes back there he sits has a sandwich and then they start talking about all this like all this shit and he's talking about like you know um uh like oh uh about has he ever thought about you know getting married and you know having kids and then he's just like you know you know, having a relationship is difficult in this and, you know, something you'll learn. And then Wesley's like, oh, I'm in complete control. And I was yeah. like, I was aren't like, we all at that age? Yeah, I know. I was like, oh, oh, yeah, you're in complete control. Traveler, anybody? You know, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I'm just waiting for my boyfriend. To I mean, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so when he asks him how he got the artificial heart, Picard gets kind of gets almost excited about telling the story like at first well, he's of course little, you're bragging about skies and shit yeah you know, you know he kind of like when he's like oh well uh, you know it's that because he's been kind of a dick the whole time and there's very few times that we got kind of get to see picard kind of kind of talk about which is something that like it almost cost him his life but at the same time there's like a certain kind of giddiness yeah that he gets out of this and this is the this is where we find out that you know he got the you know he got the artificial heart because he was impaled through the back um, while taking on three fucking Nausicans. And when he's telling the story, like he's he's speaking, of course, very eloquently about it. And like Wesley, when he tells him that the you know the Nausicaan impaled him, Wesley has that face of like a total G moment right there, like 
I'm standing in, I'm sitting in front of a fucking G, man. Like, yeah, this motherfucker's a legend. <laughs> I love where he's like, you know, I said a number of things, including probably questioning his parentage. And I was like, damn, right. I'm fucking <laughs> talking about his mama. You talking about his mama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 that was like the most professional way to say I talk shit about his mom. Right, exactly. You know, like, uh, you know, in, including regarding his questionable parentage. And you're like, oh, motherfucker, you probably said, yeah, I fucked your mom. <laughs> <laughs> right now. <laughs> your mom likes me, and I'll confirm that fact when I go home today, motherfucker, because you don't know get my bed. I'll tell her you said hi. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> and he forgot to mention and then two gentlemen from the back with uh slightly tilted caps came out and went, that's ah! right that's well that's a given right. at this point you know what i mean <laughs> mm-hmm. like, ah, he said you fucked your mom bitch <laughs> <laughs> And they're behind the Nazi. Go, you can let him tell you. Take, you gotta take that from him. You gotta take that from him. Ah, you a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Siri, that, seriously, that needs to be a companion series. Like just two guys that just randomly pop out in different moments of Star Trek. Just uh, ran, and it, have it always be like the same two dudes, and it don't matter where they're at. They're on Enterprise. They're on Enterprise, Bajor, series. fucking. It doesn't matter. Just dip out. Oh it's shit! Out of nowhere, what Voyager. Like, the, have the, it be Key and Peel. Ooh, have oh, it be Key and Peel. That's too much. There, yeah, that would just be too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so, but it's it's actually kind of cool because it's a real bonny moment between the two of them. Right. And uh, so now we go back to Riker being annoyed, <laughs> you know, because he's he's pissed off now because, see, the thing is, he's pissed off because the Packleds, you know, kidnapped Jordy. But at the same time, he's going to apologize to fucking Troy for not listening to her because, you mm-hmm. know, she's going to be, car- you know, even in Nemesis, she carried that over him. She's going to have that fucking arms crossed. Like, you could have listened to me. Yeah. Couldn't you? Yeah. Well, in Nemesis, the one of the scenes that they didn't show was her going, "Yeah, you're gonna do that again, like you did with the Pack Leds and Jordy." You know? <laughs> Jesus Christ, that was years ago. <laughs> that was like ten years ago. You could have looked at me down. down. When are you gonna let that go? <laughs> He's all on his knees. We're end. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, they want war weapons from Jordy, and um, you know. They want what they want, basically. You know, it's like, you're going to do this or you're going to die. So, um, yeah, they want them to replicate um, more of the phasers. Yeah. The type one phasers. Mm-hmm. So, um, what's funny is, is that, so then we cut, it cuts back, and then, you know, they're approaching the, uh, the station. And as they're approaching the station, Wesley starts kind of talking a little bit about, like the academy and and um you know like p- because Picard I think drops a little philosophy as they're approaching, and then he's just kind of like, you know he's like, um, and he kind of says the same thing that everybody else said. You know, there's things you don't learn in school. Well, yeah, but it was a do- it was a dope quote no, though because he it was it was I'm not saying it wasn't, but it was just basically reiterating that school ain't shit kind of philosophy. <laughs> like he said he said that you'll learn the mechanics of Starfleet at school, but if he learns about philosophy, history and the arts, it might all mean something. Yeah. And I was like, "Damn, that was You know what? Picard's steady with the profound shit." You know what I mean? And it wasn't the writers. I know he said it. <laughs> right. They, he, he actually no a little little no fact, he had no lines written. <laughs> he came up with that. Right. Just saying. <laughs> So open your mind. <laughs> <laughs> so they arrive at the at the um, at the star base and Picard and Wesley come in and he's like, well, hopefully, you know, you you'll make it on time for your because he goes, oh, I got some time. And then Picard stops and Wesley kind of started following. Him. He's like, how come I kind of get the feeling you're. You know, you're going to escort me to uh, uh, and he's like, well, Pulaski asked me to make sure you got there. <laughs> Right, and I was like, and he just was like, he almost went wanted to be like this bitch, yeah, like just real go, that fucking bitch, you know. And then uh, there's a moment where you know Wesley says he enjoyed the trip, and Picard said he did too. And uh, so then we go back, and you know, this begins the con the constant scenario of Jory being kidnapped because he gets kidnapped a lot. 
in the series. Yeah, he does. Because he's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Be fucking real, dude. Hey, it's reading Rainbow, dude. Come on. It's in a book. It's reading Rainbow. <laughs> no, he isn't a bitch. I was still, I was still thinking about fucking Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> Wesley was being a bitch. <laughs> Well, he's always getting abducted because people keep sending him into dangerous <laughs> shit. And and, and, in, and I'm not going to say swag too, like going, that I'm not band gonna, broke. I'm not going to say oh. that it's a it's a coincidence that they always send the black dude. <laughs> I'm not going to say nothing. <laughs> but it was tail end of the 80s. Right, this I'm is just true. Saying, I'm just this saying, okay? Just saying. So, uh the Packlets basically demand uh, for the return of uh, Jordy, that uh, they have all the information from the Enterprise computer, and then they stun Jordy again. And it, <laughs> for, for good measure. Yeah, they just wanted to make sure they got their point across. <laughs> so Riker's basically saying, "There's no option. We're we're not going to hand over, you know, our computer to him." And then fucking. Wharf with the fucking like well then we need to go in there and get him out of there you know and they're like but then they'll hurt him and it's like well you're kind of damned if you do damned if you don't nobody listened to troy or Worf, so guess what you yeah know? <laughs> you know they must answer by force so picard's getting ready for surgery um uh, they're like and then that doctor's like oh the person exhibits extraordinary physical condition and i was like of course because it's picard you know, you're not, yeah. you know, when he dies, you're going to put that body on display. That's right. <laughs> Cause you know, sexy. <laughs> and, uh, so we're finding out more that the, the pack are basically stealing their technology as opposed to, um, uh, developing it themselves. And they're just basically, instead of waiting for their mental growth to catch up with their technical prowess, they're basically just kind of stealing it to get stronger get better and get faster and i go yeah <laughs> I, go, I started laughing because i go yeah they want instant gratification basically millennials right uh, so they decide that they're gonna try to turn it around on the uh on the uh packlets and uh hopefully you know jordy will be able to figure out you know what they're trying to do and it's funny because like they're all saying their goodbyes but you know there's key words in there that they're saying and even fucking Worf, dude. It's like, you will die without honor. Uh, you without reaching the 25th, 4th level of... Right. Of whatever it was, you know? And I was like going... Uh, I started laughing because I was like going, wow, that's just kind of funny. Like, yep, yeah, all right, you're going to buy. And then Data's like, goodbye, Jordy. I will miss our conversations. <laughs> you know, you're like, Jesus. Right. <laughs> and, and it was really dumb, but because the Packlids are dumb. Right. You know? It makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it only works because of that. Because because of that. But and then any if, other person, like if they try to do that with like a Romulan or something, they'd be like, "Motherfucker, I know what you're doing." They would have just cut <laughs> off Jordy's head right at that moment and go, "See, right. that's what we think of your plan." <laughs> like you know, we weren't gonna kill him, but you've personally insulted my fucking intelligence. I'm offing him right now. Dude. <laughs> you know, I wasn't gonna kill him, but you know what? For that, I think I'm gonna kill him piece by piece. And then the whole t- the whole time the Romulan would look just disappointed. Like he'd keep looking back at the screen, just shaking his head, like "What's wrong with you people?" <laughs> you just say, you know what? And after he kills Jordy, you know what? I can't even take any gratification in this kill. Like my feelings are hurt. Okay, like <laughs> I'm disappointed. I'm not even happy in this victory, but right, I'm disappointed in you. Like, you know, he just shakes his head, and then all of a sudden everybody's like, oh, wow. Like, you know, because when you say you you're disappointed quiet for a sec- in somebody, you know, that's, right. that's what's more. And it's quiet for a second, and then Ramin's like, oh, yes, and th- you just started a war, bro. <laughs> like, like, the neutral zone don't mean shit. Yeah. Like, you fucked up. But I'm going to, but with all of that in mind, I want you guys to think about it for the next five minutes and just think about what you guys did, because. That's right. No, nah, dude. That's cold blooded. Cold blood. <laughs> And I'm a Romulan. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm a Romulan and you cold as fuck. Like, guy, cold as ice, bro. Like, uh, So we find out during Picard's operation that there are some complications. And they call in a, 
a, a biomolecular specialist. And they're like, well, they need to do basically what comes down to is they need to do a hard reset because <laughs> that's what it kind of came down. To. Yeah. And the guy's like, I'm not qualified for that. I know somebody who is. So so now during this whole thing, you know, they're there to make them strong. Worf gets a message that Picard is close to death. And they need to go to Starbase 515. So now shit's about to get real. So Riker's like, just fucking A. Like, I really have to deal even with says, this too. He even says, we don't have time for this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, you know, and uh, what's funny is, is that, like, you know, they're like, okay, this has got to work. So then he's like, you know, goes and talks to in- and talks to Gomez, who is too fucking hot. And I don't even know what they talked about in that scene. I don't. Well, Gomez was like running engineering. Yeah, like she an instant. It's like okay, so there's Lieutenant Commander LaForge, and then Ensign Gomez. That's how the hierarchy. The well, because she's runs. like she probably went. Um, Jordy, do you think do you, do you think I could run engineering while you're gone? Well, you're not qualified. She, please, all right, I guess. And then she lowered the zipper a little bit, revealed the three. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus, <laughs> scared me a little bit, dude. But excited you a little bit too, right? Oh, it excited me a lot. It just scared me a little bit. I'm scared of how excited I, I am. That's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you know, they're they're basically like you know, uh, it's basically you know they they're getting the message. The Picard is close to that. They you know this is not what they need, and that they're and uh, this was. This was funny because, like, at that point, they're like, they need to get Jordy back. So, like, you know, we got to do this now. And then Crusher, I mean, not Crusher, uh, uh, Troy and um, Racist Doctor are like, the captain needs us. Like, oh, now it's fuck Jordy. The captain needs us. Right. Because, you know, he's just an engineer. We can get another one at the start. <laughs> they're, right. they're like, listen, Jordy, we're going to have to wrap this up, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what, Jordy? <laughs> we would love to help get you back, but. Picard needs us right now because he's about to die and you know what and we're so curious how you got that promotion as chief of engineer you said <laughs> you were the navigator bro know, like and, and the fact that you know you just went over there you know I mean you made some pretty stupid remarks going over this so kind of have to blame you for the reason you're over there it's like not for nothing you were talking shit that's all I'm trying to say you know you come and talk about rubber bands and shit I mean that's disrespectful you come on the bridge you know? all acting all like all cool as shit you know and you get your and you got yourself trapped over there I mean Listen, you at like some a, point wait, wait wait I got myself trapped over here like Jordan 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 <laughs> there's no point in, there's no sense in right. pointing blame but you at got some yourself point over there. at some point with all the shit you talk you're gonna have to own up to it <laughs> like that's just how it is bro like I mean, pound for a pound. You know what I mean? They start saying random shit. Yeah, it is. It's all like the birds, it. In, the birds in the bush and just <laughs> right. fucking. Exactly. Yeah. You know, eggs before they're hatched. You know, that kind of shit. That's it's right. like, <laughs> Jordy's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we can argue all day, but either way, we dipping. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, you be you and we be us. So, that's how it's going right. to So, they're about to make their move. And then Riker calls down Insy Gomez, uh, stand ready to remain hot. You know, that's what I put on. <laughs> I put in the notes. It's like Riker calls down there and tells her to remain hot. <laughs> Doesn't even tell her what she needs to do. And uh, so Jordy figures out what the hell they're supposed to do. And then Jordy makes his move. And then they release the Crimson Force Field. <laughs> that was funny. It sounded like something you would see in like a pulp comic or right, something. Yeah. My Crimson Force Field. <laughs> Lost in space type of shit right there, you know. The <laughs> Crimson Force Field, danger, danger, Will Robinson, <laughs> and uh, which was kind of a lame strategy. He basically all basically it was was they deactivated the photon torpedoes that he had given the guys when they launched this and said that they disabled their power or whatever because they're stupid, right? And they 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 wouldn't be able to figure it out themselves. And then they beam Jordy out of there and then dip. So then, of course, Picard uh, awakens, and uh, fucking Pulaski's right there. She takes, you know, thing off, and he's like, the hell are you doing here? (laughs) (laughs) I was like, he is so fucking grumpy. I suppose the whole ship knows. (laughs) Because he doesn't know what happened while he was under. And then, of course, you know, he doesn't even really thank her. 
you know, for anything. You just like, ugh. <laughs> you know, she's like, it's like, what, what the hell are you doing here? Yeah, and she's she's like, you know, I just saved your life, and he's just like, whatever. So when he returns to the bridge, like he goes onto the bridge with Wesley, and everybody starts like clapping. And he just gives that look of like, motherfuckers better stop before I kill each and every one of you while the other watches me kill the other person. Like, <laughs> and everybody's like, all right, yeah, they're clapping. And then all of a sudden it's like that, like slow, like stop. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> then he's like, uh, pleased to report that uh, Wesley's uh, test results permit him to continue studying aboard the Enterprise. And any rumors of his brush with death was greatly exaggerated, which we hear again in First Contact. Reports of my assimilation have been greatly exaggerated. Yeah, that was a cool line, too. Yeah. Uh, so then the Enterprise heads off back to Epsilon Sector. So, uh, yeah, so that was the, uh, that is the Samaritan Snare, which we don't It was an art. Go ahead. Oh, go no, go ahead. I was gonna say we really don't know what they did with the packlets after they beamed Jordy back and like dipped. Like they just I think they don't know what they did with it. I think they just did. <laughs> they're kinda like, yeah, we're out of here. <laughs> and then something and the like, packlets, no. their navigation system works, so they they probably dipped too. Yeah. Where is pack led space? That's the real question. I think the next episode is up your up your alley, right? What is the next episode? I forget. Up the long ladder. Ugh, I have to go to Memory Alpha. I don't remember the fucking episode. I'm not that big of a nerd. <laughs> uh, it's uh, two threatened colonies that must cooperate to survive. They're like 20, what is it, Northern Homogeny. I think this is where they. some of them are Irish or Scottish, I think. Oh, I love this episode. <laughs> I just clicked on it. First of all, the chick is hot as fuck. That's number one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the one and in she's the red got dress. The, and it, my favorite character. Is that is the her father in it? Just he is so he's almost offensively Irish, and the cool thing that dude's actually Irish, the actor. Mm -hmm. So none of these accents are fake. Like it's just so fun. It's so good, and it's it's kind of like it's almost like a back in time episode because you see just Riker gets it, (laughs) motherfucker, and he officially gets it. We see that shit on camera. Oh yeah, when she drops the when she drops there, you just see like. All like all her waist out. You're like, oh, Riker's gay. Ooh, and she gives him that. What you don't like, girls? <laughs> <laughs> then Fucking suddenly, suddenly dude. he was just defending his own masculinity. At that hey, wait a minute, bitch! Ain't nobody said that about that. I ain't into that gay shit. He <laughs> gets so fucking thick. <laughs> That's later on when I get questionable in a in a episode. Like uh, I think two seasons down the line. <laughs> the cool thing about this episode, though, is it's just a fun episode. Like this, this is one of those episodes where they don't—they're not really taking themselves too seriously. Although there is a problem with Worf, if I remember. Yeah, because doesn't he like collapse and then like you fainted, and he's like Klingons do not faint. Klingons do not faint. Like, oh, oh no, he geez. gets yeah, he gets Klingon measles. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, this whole episode is just silly, <laughs> but silly in a good way. Like not in a like oh this is but dumb. A lot like of it's Pulaski funny. In it. There's a lot of Pulaski in it. Uh, yeah. You take the good, you take the bad, right? You, you got, you know what? <laughs> no, it, nothing's perfect. <laughs> Until she's gone. <laughs> oh, this is the one where they do the Klingon tea ceremony and blah, blah, blah. But the fucking Irish shit is so great. <laughs> and O'Brien, <laughs> my dog, you know, he's in this show, dude. Oh, yeah. These are my people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, that's that's it for the episode. <laughs> Please rate and review the show on iTunes because, you know, it's nice. Um, <laughs> our show is also available on Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play Music, as well as thelazygeeks.com. If you want to suggest uh, episodes for the show, anything Star Trek related, so movies, animated series, whatever, um, you can share them on our Facebook or Google Plus pages. We are also on other social media outlets uh, such as Twitter and Instagram, both under the same both under the name The Lazy Geeks, one word. Uh, any feedback you want to give us, definitely hit our website, thelazygeeks.com, or send them by email, the, the lazy geeks network at gmail.com. And you can find me on the internet. Oh. Because it's been a long road. 
<laughs> getting from there. Don't start it if you don't intend to finish it. That's all I'm saying. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at a middle aged geek, Instagram middle aged underscore geek, and you can check out my other podcast every Wednesday, the Expended Play Movie Podcast. Uh, this week we released an episode continuing about composers, and we're talking about the infamous Michael Kamen, who uh, did music for a lot of big movies, Roadhouse, uh, Lethal, Lethal Weapon, uh, Die Hard. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. A lot of a lot of movies. Um, basically, he was the he was the Hans Zimmer of the '90s, uh, and you can catch that on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music. I also have a Facebook page, Facebook.com/slash The Middle Age Geek, and you check it all out on TheMiddleAgeGeek.com. And you can find me on Twitter <laughs> at SapienTLG. All right, that is it for this edition of The Away Team. I'm Stephen Vargas. I'm Adam Riley. Two to beam up. This has been a production of the Lazy Geeks Network. Available only at thelazygeeks.com.